Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. Welcome to Mailbag Monday. We've got some great questions to answer today, Angel. Let's jump right into this thing. What do we have? All right, Joe. My wife and I just did one of those little marriage quizzes. And one question was, how satisfied are you with your marriage relationship? That's dangerous. <laughs> I yeah, was, <laughs> there went the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, the whole weekend. <sighs> I was surprised to find out that her approval rating was a lot lower than mine. <laughs> do all men think their relationship is going better than women do? Shoot, yeah, man. I'm a guy. I think I'm hitting a home run every time I get up to the plate. I'm swinging for the fence, man. If it didn't go over, at least I was aiming for it. That's right, man. My heart is right before God. I think I'm hitting a home run every day. Every man gets up. How'd your day go? Real good. That's your marriage. Really good. That's like I'm really good. <laughs> I'm doing really good. Unless you're some sort of fit of depression. You think you're doing good every time. We don't know. <laughs> we don't. Every marriage counseling I've ever done, it was always the husband. The wife would come in three times, three couples I was dealing with, they were ready for a divorce. The wife says, she's done. She's through. He said, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, I'm not make, trying to be funny. I'm serious. The guy said, veteran marriage. Said, I didn't know that's a problem. That's because men are oblivious. And ladies, unless you're telling him detail on a regular basis, he didn't have a clue. But you can't yell at him. You can't grab all the time. You just need to have one of those. I used to have this greatest thing I ever read. Once a week, sit down with a cup of coffee or a hot tea for 30 minutes. Sit down and look at one another with no kids, nothing. Get on the porch, drive down to McDonald's, drive to a coffee place, go to Starbucks. For 30 minutes, just sit and look at one another. Hey. How are we doing on a scale of 1 to 10? What can we do better? And then I kept a list. Our job, our vocation, the house we're living in, our sex life, our children, our parenting thing, the church we're at. I would just run a scale of 1 to How are we doing? We're doing 7. Do we need to find a better place to go? No, I just don't like that. Well, we need to change that. What do we need to do? Get to the point. You've got about 60 seconds to answer something. Because you're not going into the two-hour detail or three-week seminar. You're just trying to, are you happy? I thought you were happy. Well, no, I don't like this. I didn't know that. I didn't know. People laugh all the time until the marriage seminar where we're at a, a seafood restaurant 30 years into our marriage. Uh, four of our kids are with us. I t- flew two of our kids down from college. and went to, I took my wife to a seafood restaurant for 30 years. That's what my dad did. We, did, we lived in Tennessee. There's not a seafood restaurant, so it was a special thing. So we're sitting there, and I noticed my wife's not eating her seafood. And I said, honey, you okay? Yeah. I said, is your food not good? She said, Joe, is this a good seafood restaurant? I said, yeah, baby. It's a five-star restaurant. Took two weeks to get in here. Is there a problem? She said, I just realized something. I said, what? I don't like seafood. I've been taking it for 30 years. She said in front of my kids, I just figured you never could find a good restaurant. If this is a good seafood restaurant, I don't like seafood. I don't like steak. So for the next 14 years of marriage, we went to a steakhouse on our anniversary, or we ate steak. For I didn't know. I'm 30 years. I teach on marriage. And my kids are like, my Dad, you teach on marriage. I just learned something new. You learn something new all the time. That's why if you're not talking on a regular basis, that's why the divorce rates are the highest when the last kid leaves home. Because everybody's just tolerated. Well, I'll put up with it all. You're not trying to change it. You're not trying to fix it. You're not working on it. You're just tolerating one another. And but that's that's it's going. That is not what God intended. Marriage is supposed to. We are supposed to have the kind of marriage. First Peter three that makes everybody else jealous. When you go out and put people say, "Man, I wish I had a marriage like yours." I wish I had a marriage like yours. Well, I have a normal marriage. We have to repent every day, forgive every day, but we are committed to one another. Yeah. We tell the truth to one another. If there's a problem, we say it. We're not always happy, you know. People ask us. We do marriage seminars all the time. But y'all don't seem to agree on hardly anything. No, we very seldom agree. We're opposites. God puts opposites together. But we love one another. We're trying to help one another. It's just it's an incredible deal. Marriage is the second greatest thing God ever did in mankind. But it's different, and every day's a challenge. Yeah, and, and um, see, Joe would be perfectly content in his office all day ordering DoorDash. Still Jesus counts. And studying. Yes. I'm in hog heaven. Yeah, just studying, studying, studying. I am a people person. <laughs> I have to, I would, that would drive me into deep depression. So usually every day, Joe's kind of gotten used to it. He's like, who are you going to lunch with today? 
where are you going today? And so uh, we've just learned to allow uh, our, you know, to, I know that's how he is. He's happy. He knows how I am. I'm happy going and meeting and uh, fellowshipping. And yeah, and, and, and you got to be real honest. John, what's going? Let's go eat. I said, let's go. Let's go right now. And I just jump. Let's go right now. I, I yeah. can drop it. The drop it. I love. I love my wife. I want her to be happy. But we are two completely different people in how we function and what, what kind of scratches our itch. Angel loves people. People love Angel. She's got more friends than I got hair on the back of my neck. You know, me. I'm real content. Just me. I, I love what I do. I do, and I get into it, and I can drop deep, and I'm just gone. And I, yes. I, and yes. So I need help. I need um, grace. And, but the biggest thing is communication. Yes. And the second biggest thing is do not take any more of those quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, that's not smart because you're going to find you've married. I tell people, couples don't understand. When you got married, you married your 180 degree exact opposite. It's not It's not Adam and Steve. It's Adam and Eve. When God made a helper for Adam, he made the exact total opposite. He made a female. Different DNA, different verbs, different word skills, uh, different manual dex- dex- dexterity. He made an op- Hey, son, you already have you. I'm not going to make another you. You already needed help. I'm going to make somebody better than you that's going to be a helper to you because I love you. I love you so much. I want to make you a helper that's good at everything you're not good at, can do things you can't do, smart where you're not smart. So quit fighting over the thing I gave you. Well, we don't ever agree. You're not supposed to agree. You're supposed to see the problem from a different viewpoint. You know That's what makes life exciting. Well, and I think the thing I love most about marriage is the friendship. Mm-hmm. That oh, man. You always have somebody there that you can talk to, you can count on. Be honest and, with, just yeah, be open. share life with. Yeah, I love it. So, yeah, no more quizzes. <laughs> don't, don't do the quiz. But you are going to be growing the rest of your life. If yeah. you're married for 50 years, you'll learn something on the 50th. On the 50th day of your anniversary, you're going to learn something you didn't know before. Well, I didn't know that about you. That's because you're still growing together. You're yeah. still growing together. And everybody's changing. Yes, praise God. All right. Joe, do you have any tips on helping people who have lost a spouse? My best friend lost her husband, and I'm like most people. I have no idea how to talk to her about it. Whoa. Well... Okay, I'll speak from this end. Somebody's lost a spouse. Uh, it took about a year where you just get downright tired of people. Well, Joe, I'm so sorry to hear you lost your wife. Yeah, I've answered that question about a thousand times. Me too. And I'm pretty much trying to get over it at this point. Quit bringing it up. And there's a thing where you just, you're trying to be just, how do I say this? It, just be yourself. I used to tell people all the time, if you have a family member that dies and, and you go over to the house, don't say anything. Go to the kitchen and wash some dishes. Go to the bathroom and clean the toilet. Uh, wash some towels, dry some, cl- clean some clothes, go mow the grass, do some weed eating. Don't say nothing. Just go. Love, it's a four-letter word, but it's, it's helping somebody. Love's not what you feel. It's what you do for somebody. Jesus said, don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. If you love somebody, hey, go, go hang out with me. And don't worry about bringing up. Oh, I shouldn't have brought that up. Don't worry about that. You're going to say something you probably shouldn't have said. Uh, if you've never been around somebody who's lost somebody, you don't know what to say. I didn't go to school. Hey, I went to school for dead people. You know, I know exactly what to say. You don't know what to say. Just be yourself and be honest. And so if something comes up and you realize, oh, that was probably not the best thing to bring up. I can avoid that. Let's just stick to this. Well, when I had heard that Denise had passed, um, and I'd known you both for many years. Yep. Uh, you know, when, when you lose a spouse, either through divorce or, or through death, everybody changes the way they perceive you. Yes, they do. Pe- people, that, <laughs> people that would invite you as a couple out. Don't nope. anymore. You're on your own now, big boy. <laughs> Which is very sad to me. I actually saw a, I actually saw a Facebook post the other day, and this I knew this these two couples, and one had a spouse that had passed away. And did you hear that car go by really fast? <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were right by a racetrack. Here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so um, they, so this one couple says, a few years ago we went to dinner with. The couple that had lost a spouse, great memories. And I'm thinking, well, why didn't you just invite the wife? You know, she was still alive. Yep. She's still here. Yep. She would like a night out, you know. <laughs> and when I divorced, you know what? There was one couple, and they're my dear, dear friends, but one couple would invite me out as a couple to dinner, invite me over. As a single. As a single person. Yes. So first of all, I would say that's the first thing you need to do yeah. is to treat them like you always did. Yeah. Um, and secondly, when I heard that Denise had passed, I mean, I was five states away. I remember I, I texted Joe and told him how sorry I was for him and his children and what a loss it was. 
And then a month later, I just said, hey, Joe, if it's okay, I'm, I know what it's like when you lose somebody. Once the dust settles, yep. everybody's kind of gone because life moves on. Yep. Is it okay if I just check on you once in a while? And he said, please do. We're texting. We're not talking at this point. Yeah. And so once a month, I would just text him. For eight months. <laughs> yeah. You, you okay? How are you? I am fine. That yeah. is good to hear. How are the kids? They are good. Yeah. You're focusing on the ministry. <laughs> stay busy. Blah, blah, blah. And so, but the thing is, is stay steady. Stay yes. consistent. Um, if they want to talk about it, they will. But let them bring it up. Yeah, let them and, bring it up. And um, let them... Uh, let them guide you, but don't avoid them. Because my dad said to me one time, when you don't know what to say is probably when you need to say something the Man, most. Yeah, it's not to be a bumper sticker. And so when you are when you feel uncomfortable and awkward, that's not the time to back away. That's the time to press in. Yep. So I would say invite them to lunch. Sure. Take them to a movie. Make them say no. Yeah, I had a friend that lost a child. And she was devastated. And it really went into a deep depression. And I would just drive by her house and say, get in the car. You're going to the movies. Yeah. Come on, we're going to go to dinner. Yeah. And I would just make her get up and go. So be a friend. That's the most important well, thing. That's great. So, um, and I can tell you, they will they will never forget it. No, they won't. They'll remember you till Jesus comes, I promise you. In, in your lowest point, you find out who your real friends are. Yep. You find out who your real friends at your lowest point. You realize, hey, they showed up. Hey, they came over. Hey, they brought dinner. Hey, they, they bought me tickets to go to a ball game. Like, that's a friend. I had a friend that uh, is one of my dearest friends in the world. And when I went to divorce, she would, every day, we would go to the gym or we would go to breakfast or we would go somewhere. Somewhere she reached out to me. And um, that honestly kept my sanity. So There are know. friends that stick closer than the brother. It is yeah. typical. So, good there. question. Great. It shows that you care. So, yes. that's all you need to do is keep caring. Yes. All right. Okay, let's take just a minute. Let's talk about, uh, talk about a few things, some interesting things coming up all the time. One is technology that uh, kind of running a lot of interference with some married people, where uh, you're getting involved on the Internet with something that you shouldn't be involved in. And computer's a great tool, but it's a tool. It's like a hammer and like a screwdriver. It's a tool. It is not a, it's not a social club. Especially if you're married, and we get questions sometimes. You think it's okay that my husband or wife are, you know, still talking to somebody over? The, no, not really. So, uh, Angel, jump in on this. What do you think about this? Well, that's a that's a keg. <laughs> um, I have social media. You do not. Yep. I have uh, none. I'm in a cave. Well, you do have one that I created for you. <laughs> I don't think you know about it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I'll open it when I get there. Knock, knock, knock. Open this door. <laughs> And I I like it because I have traveled for most of my adult life, and yes. I have friends all over, uh, even in other countries, that yes. that is my best way to keep in touch with them. So I like it a lot. <clears throat> I do think it can be dangerous. Well, I, a couple of things, because you're a veteran of it, and I'm, I've known that, I knew that when I married you. But you've got boundaries. They're just internal boundaries in that thing. So it's just... Uh, Give some rules about when you're talking with somebody on distance on the internet. What what are the fence posts at? What is it you don't talk about? You do talk about what what, what where's places you realize? Well, I don't go into that area. I don't answer that. That's that's kind of personal. I mean, how do you do that? What are the rules in that thing? There's got to be rules. If you don't have any rules, there's no rules. That's where you're going to have a problem. Well, for the most part, I only talk to women, and unless I'm related to them, if your cousin, okay. uh, I. Uh, I have a former brother-in-law that I still chat with occasionally. Yep. I mean, his children are, you know, my nieces. Yep. So, um, uh, but for the most part, I respect if it's somebody else's spouse, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not out of respect for them. I'm not going to, you know, go down that road. Now, if they ask me, you know, ministry related question or they want a recipe or something, you know, that's got it. That I would, yeah, that I would talk to anybody about, of course, you know, but, um, I mean, for the most part, it's just to catch up, just to say, hey, this is this is where we are. You know, this is a fun moment in our family's (laughs) life. Uh, You know, let me share it with you just like I would, you know, you know, if I was in the church lobby or something. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not uh, I mean, I think it's dangerous when you start. I know a lot of people that have had affairs. They look up 
high school loves, and they've got some fantasy about it. Yeah. Life's going on for one party, but not the other. Yeah. And You're stuck on the side of the road at a concrete table. Right. So, I mean, you know where your heart is. Yeah. And so you have to put those boundaries there. And if you're too tempted, then I wouldn't do it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Um, you know, I just think it can be dangerous. But, you know, so can television. You yep. know, I mean, um, I see people that, that watch things and, and, and open the door and let sexual things into their bedroom that, that should not be. Yeah. And so, you know, this. so you have to have boundaries in, in every part of your life. Uh, even with music, you know, yeah. uh, so any we are so inundated with stuff. Many media is it's everywhere. I, I used to think of this is what's the first thing on your mind when you wake up in the morning? If you can't stay away from more than two minutes and all of a sudden somebody else beside your spouse on your mind, you got a problem. You got a problem. If, yeah. the, if the person, the first person in your mind is not your spouse, we got a problem, boys. Something's inside. We're going to have to get it out. So there's going to take some repentance, forgiveness. Uh, it's like you got to go to the throne of God. You got to roll your kids over to God. So God is sitting right. I'm thinking about somebody that's not even my spouse. And I've dealt with couples my whole life, married couples, Christian couples, realize I've got a challenge. I'm, having, I'm thinking about this person all the time. You know, uh, They're in my church and they're in this. Well, then you, you have to control. I can't come into your life and do that. You got to give that to God. You got to roll that throw on to Him. God, I shouldn't be thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I need to be thinking about you. Think on these things. Whatever is lovely, honest, just, praiseworthy, they're a good report. Don't think on these things. Those things trying to exalt stuff against the knowledge of God. That's that's the devil trying to take you to hell. It's going to bust up your marriage. It's going to bust up your life. Going to it's going to create God from answering prayers. That's hell trying to mess with your life. That's not somebody's flesh. That flesh is going back to dust. You try to, I try to imagine when we talk about marriage, I say, guys, you think, you, you think, hey, I'm in love with this beautiful woman. I said, well, go meet her mother because 40 years from now, that's what you're going to be sucking lips off of. You think he's so <laughs> handsome? Go meet his father. That's what you're going to be sucking lips off 40 years from now because his hair is going to drop out of his head. His bed is going to drop down around his ankles. Life happens, you know. The flesh is going back to dust. Yeah. Whatever flesh you're interested in is going back to dust. Half of it's not real anyhow. If you take all the makeup and all the plastic surgery out of it, it's still a human body going back to dirt, and we're going to bury it one day. Right. You're getting involved in something that's temporal. And so you get yourself involved in something that's temporal, hell's got you. you got to keep your focus on what's eternal. Hey, man, eventually I'm going to see God. Yeah. I'm going to give an account of every idle thing in my life, every idle word or deed. Eventually i got to settle up. So I don't need to take a pile of dung into heaven. I need to take some rewards into heaven. Right. So I need to realize, what is this? That's hell trying to take me out. That's not some uh, pretty woman or handsome man trying to uh, allure me. That's hell trying to get me. But if you don't know God, you, you'll get suckered in. And I've had people, I've got, had a guy sit in my office one time, been married for 34 years, and, and he's thinking about divorcing his wife. And his answer, spirit-filled Christian, church-attending, tithing, and said, well, I think God wants me happy. I think I'm, and I'm not happy in my marriage. And I think God wants me happy. Long story short, he divorced his wife. They've been married all those years. He marries this other guy. She divorced her husband. A year later, she divorces him. He's back on the single road again. Guys, whatever you're looking at is temporary. Yeah. It's all temporary. If you don't get that in you, you're going to get taken out. Big time. I always say, play the scenario out to the end. Yeah, that's good. Where's the end of this thing? Because, <laughs> I, you know, when I got divorced, a lot of people, when they were thinking of divorce, would call me. I think I don't know why, thinking that I would say, yeah, do it. Great. I'd say, I'm the worst person to call because I hate it worse than ever because yeah, I see the fallout from yeah. it. It's easier to work on your marriage than it is to get a divorce. But it, let's fast forward this. If you want to live in a one-bedroom apartment, <laughs> working your butt off, seeing your kids half the time, then go for it if it's worth that. But if you look into the eyes of your kids, mm. there's no no selfish choice that's worth hurting that. So play. The, the Bible's full of stories of people that got remarried, lost a spouse to death, uh, they went stupid on them, and they got remarried. And there has to, there's, you have to really search the scripture, but you can find it. You're supposed to focus on the person you're married to now, mm-hmm. not the former spouse, not the one that's dead or you're divorced and they live somewhere else. You may have to still deal with stuff legally or, you know, financial, whatever, that's just legal stuff, but you need to control your thought life. My thought life's here, not yeah. there. Yeah. I'm, I'm committed to this. And that's a personal thing on the inside, and only you will know the answer to that. And you'll be the first one to know when you're going stupid. You know, you can control your thought life. Well, I just can't help it. No, you can help it. Yep. The Bible says think on these things. You can control what you think about. You can. You Evidently, can. you're not doing that, and it's going to bite you on the backside eventually if you don't get that out of there. It absolutely will. 
So, I mean, it's just, you, you just really need to set boundaries in every area of your yep. life. Yeah. And, and focus on falling back in love with your spouse. No, no. All that energy that you're giving, building a fantasy about someone else, you could put that energy towards the, the one that you com- should be committed to. I had a guy come up at a marriage seminar years ago, and uh, he said, my wife and I have been married for several years, but said, I've learned something. said, I fall in love with my wife six or seven times a year. Mm-hmm. I said, what? Yeah, I fall in love with my wife all over again. I learned to date again. I sent a little card in the mail, leave a little note you know, under the pillow, uh, on the bathroom mirror. Uh, I'm still dating my wife. I have to k- keep on purpose dating my wife, and that's what God had. God loved mankind. He wants to li- have a relationship, but mankind kept dumping him. And I remember one time in Malachi, <laughs> Israel's left God again, and they're starving. They've been beat up and been overrun by their enemies. And all of a sudden, there's Christ said, God, we want to come home. We want to come home. We want to come back. And God said, well, I'd love to have you back. Well, come on back, you thumb-sucking, snot-nosed. <laughs> but no, he didn't. He said, I'd love to have you back. Well, how did we get back? And the first thing God said, he said, well, bring the tithe into the storehouse. And they said, what? He said, well, bring the tithe into the storehouse. Now, this is real important right here. And I said, well, we just want a relationship. Yeah, but where, you, where, you, where your money is, your heart is. Mm. Your heart will follow where your money is. He said, bring your money, your heart will follow. That's and good. I tell people all the time, tithing is the most powerful thing you'll ever do because my heart's behind that money. I write a check. That 10% goes to my local church. My heart's behind that because my sweat's behind that. And I got, I got opinions that's very serious to me, you know, but the blessing of God comes on that. So when you're having relationship stuff, like, what is relationship? You know, I tell people all the time, don't tell me. She said, don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. What's it cost you to love me? Mm-hmm. It's not cost you something. It's not love. Yeah. People say, I'm in love. I said, what's it cost you guys that are dating? Yeah, I had couples come, then you're still living at home. I said, you, don't, you can't love her. You still live at home. You're, you, you don't pay the house payment. You don't pay the water bill. You don't pay the electric bill. You don't buy the car. You didn't put the gas in the car. You don't put money in your pocket. You can't love it. You can't even love you. You say you love her. You don't have the ability to love yourself. Mm-hmm. How can you love her when you don't even love you yet? Well, that's why we go back to the Jeremiah's, you know, the people carried off into captivity, Daniel, Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego. God told him, said, build ye houses, dwell in them, plant a garden, eat the fruit. He said, get you a place to live, get some furniture, get a job. Can you live off the job? Then number five, get yourself a wife. Number five is get a wife. You don't need a wife till you have a job and a house and some furniture and a place to eat all <laughs> That we get someone, I'm in love. No, you have no idea what love is. Love's about giving your life away. And you don't even have a life to give right now. You're not in love. There's other words for that. <laughs> there are. And, and honestly, if you take the energy and the, the, all of the stuff that, that your mind is you yep. know, focused on and say, you know what, I'm going to just refocus that and give. When you give love, Boo. it is so much more you can't, rewarding. Don't wait on the emotion. You can create yeah. the emotion. Let's, yeah. let's get the action going. I'm going to love you. If it, I don't care if hell freezes over. I'm going to love you forever. <laughs> well, then I'd like you to take that guy's advice and start writing me some little notes everywhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Woo. I'd like you to fall in love with me. Yes, ma'am. I heard that. <laughs> the notes are coming. Praise God. Oh, anyway. So, yeah, just guard your heart and uh, guard your mind and, and put boundaries. And you do have the ability to do that. People say, well, I can. Yes, you have the ability mm-hmm. to control what you think about. Yeah. You can. And, and what you watch. Yeah, I'm telling you. And what, what you, you listen, listen to. to. Yes. Because you are what you feed on, guys. You are what you feed on. I used to tell people and, and we, when I worked in the electoral business, if I get you in a five-minute conversation, I'll mark you. Because in five minutes, what you've been watching, thinking, and reading will come out of your mouth. Yep. You are what you feed on. So we can, we can do builds, business deals real good. I know where your weakness is. I just, it just came out of your mouth. I know it's what's good. important to you. It just came out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of heart, the mouth will speak, and you can't stop it. It's like gravity. What you've been feeding on will come out of your mouth. That's good. Ooh, that's good. Hey, guys. We love you so much. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a good one. <laughs> have a great one, guys. We love you. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, JoeMcGeeMinistries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.